Hello guys. In Prisma Migrations video, we created user and post Prisma models. We also defined a one-to-many relation. However, we didn't really use it. From my experience, one-to-many relation is the most frequently used. So let's take a closer look at it. In our case, a user can have many posts. So on user model, we created posts field. This field is defined on Prisma level and doesn't exist in user stable. It has type of array of posts. And this is one side of the relation. The second side of the relation that actually stores foreign key is model post. We defined user ID as a foreign key. This field is a relation scalar field and exists in posts table. In addition to user ID, we also define an annotated field author. This field doesn't exist in post table and defined on Prisma level. This field is annotated with a relation attribute and this attribute defines the relation. It's a type of user and tells that foreign key is user ID and references field ID on user model. Prisma uses model entity first migration pattern. So if we go to migrations, right here, initial migration, and we'll look at a migration.sql file, we can see that this one to many relation translates into add foreign key constraint statement in migration. So let's go ahead and use this relation. First, we're going to go into repository and we're going to go into base repository and we will update get by ID method to pass additional options. If you would like to know how we created this repository, please check out Prisma repository pattern video. So in get by ID method, we're going to get another argument called options. And this will be a type of record string any. and it will default to an empty object. Now we're going to add these options to the object that we're passing to find unique method. Now let's go to the app folder and the user's route. And in the page that TSX, I wrapped username in Next.js's link. I made it blue and pointed to single user page. So user slash user ID user slash user id route doesn't exist yet so let's go ahead and create it in the users folder let's create another folder and this will be a dynamic route so we're going to put a square brackets id and this will be our folder and in this folder we're going to create another file called page.tsx so let's go ahead and put the following code in there we're going to import user repository from uh, repositories we're going to export const dynamic force dynamic. So it's a dynamic page. Uh, we're going to have an async function get data, and we're going to pass a user ID as a number. We're going to instantiate the repository. This will be the user repository. When we're going to get a user by ID, and we're going to pass options in here. And this option is going to be include post true. So we would like to get our user with the related posts. And then we're going to return the user. So this posts right here that we're using is the same field that we have on the user model right here in Prisma. Let's go ahead and continue with our code. Now we're going to do export default async function user page. We're going to get the user from get data method. And we're going to return the following code. Uh, we're going to put a div and a heading, you know, just bold and username. Um, put a little margin there to space it out. And then we're going to check if user has posts. Remember, when we defined user right here in types.d.ts file, this post is optional. So we're going to check if it exists. And if it does exist, we're going to go and map over user.posts. And we're going to just show the post title and when it was created on. And that would be the code. Let's go ahead and check how it looks in the browser. We're going to run npm run dev. And we're going to switch to the browser and put localhost 3000. A few videos ago, we created this link on the index page so we can jump straight to the users. Let's click on it. And we can see the list of our users. And the names are linked to each user's page. And they're in blue. Let's click on one of them. And we can see that our user Alicia has one article celebrated office. 
let's go check another user casey casey has two articles and then clinton um, have another one article so it seems like our relation is working now let's go back to vs code and use the reverse of this relation we're gonna go to the posts page so we're gonna look at page.tsx and i also created a link that wraps a uh, post title and it makes it blue and then it points to a single post page let's go ahead and create that page in a posts we're gonna create another folder id in the square brackets because it's a dynamic route and in this id folder we're going to create a file called page.tsx and the code will be pretty much the same as on a single users page and we're going to return the html in h2 tag we're going to put the post title and then again we're going to check if author exists on the post and if it does we're going to display that posts author's name uh, next to the post's title. As I mentioned, we didn't pass include options in a getById method of the post repository. In the case with a user, we actually may or may not want to get user with a post or without posts. For example, for users page, we would like to include posts, right? But if we would like to get a user for a profile page, we won't need the post. And that's why we want to have this flexibility to pass the include options in a get by ID method when we are trying to get a single user. However, when we get a single post, we may always want to include the post author, right? Because displaying it without author may not even make sense. So instead of uh, passing include options all the time, when we call get by ID method, we can actually code the include options on the repository level. So let's go to post repository and here we're going to override get by ID method. So we are going to define get by ID method in a post repository and we'll pass ID as a parameter and it will be the number and we're going to have a promise uh, post as a return type and we are going to be returning the get by ID method called on the parent class. And now, since get by ID method of our parent class can accept additional options, we will put the include right here and we will use include author and we put true. This author field, it comes from Prisma schema and this author field that is in the Prisma level. Let's make sure we save changes and let's go ahead and check what we have in the browser. Let's uh, type slash posts. And we can see our posts with a title and created on and the title is in blue and it's wrapped in a link so let's click on the first post and we can see that the post is displayed and we have author's name and the post content so let's go back to another post um, the same thing we can see the author of our posts so it looks like the inverse relation works as well finally let's go ahead and talk about a couple more concepts uh, one of them will be optional one to many and the other will be referential actions. In the relation that we have, a post must have uh, an author, a user. This is called a mandatory one to many relation. However, sometimes you may want to have an optional relation. The post may or may not have a user. Maybe a post was written by a guest. So to have an optional one to many relation, you need to put a question mark in a Prisma schema, right, and the model, the user ID field that will make this field nullable. And then as well, on the Prisma level field author, you're going to put also a question mark. So this will make this relation optional. Since our relation is optional, we are okay to have orphan posts, meaning when we delete a user, we are okay to leave a post in the database. To do that, we need to use a referential action. Actually, we already have an implicit referential action here. Referential action defines what should be done to the related records if the parent record is deleted, for example, or changed. As you can see, we didn't define referential action in a relation attribute. However, as I said, we have an implicit one. And if we take a look at the migrations, and in the migration, we have altered table. And in this statement, we have on delete restrict and on update cascade. This is the default implicit referential action. 
So to change that, we can go back to Prisma schema. And then in the relation attribute, we can put on delete. We'll put set null. Since we have a nullable field for in key user ID, so if we delete the user, it will be okay to set that field to null. And uh, on update, it will still be cascade. Another referential action that is often used is on delete cascade. If you have orders and order lines in your database, when you delete an order, you don't want to keep order lines because, well, it doesn't make sense. And then you don't want to go and delete them one by one. So it's easier to set a referential action on database level. So when you delete an order, for example, right? And in our case, user, we can say cascade. So it's going to go and delete all the posts that are related to this user. And on update cascade, which you don't really have to put, but I'll just put it, it will simply uh, change the user ID on the post if the ID of the user changes for some reason. But usually it doesn't happen a lot because we are referencing it by the primary key. However, you can define a relation by, for example, some other unique key uh, like email, right? And if that email changes on the user and you're referencing maybe posts also by this email on update cascade will change the email on the post. These are the basics of one to many relation. I hope you liked this video. And if you want to learn about one to one relation with Prisma and XJS, please check out this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.